Okay, now we're back to uh, the team building sessions. Um, and after this, we have a small group discussion. And may the Lord lead us. Uh, now we're at session nine. We have 36 sessions for this, um, this theme. Uh, session nine is called Artificial Harmony. Artificial Harmony. The scripture reading taken from 2 Timothy 2, 7. Consider what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all things. Let's pray. Father, as we ponder upon this issue of artificial or superficial harmony within that, that frequently occur in a team. Father, we pray that may you speak to us through your words, how to build a team of truth, a team that can trust each other, a team that is not afraid, afraid of conflict. Because sometimes we have this culture of um, avoidance of conflict, fear of conflict, and there is no honest communications, no honest or true harmony upon the team. Father, we pray that, Lord, that you speak to us through your words as, you, <clears throat> as we are guided by your Holy Spirit. Uh, teach us, Lord, with your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> The five dysfunction of a team, uh, we I use the acronym FLY. Uh, now we come to the second one called fear of conflict. Um, we start on the fear of conflict and the first topic we will talk about is artificial harmony. The verse we have just read just now is Paul talking to young Timothy to ask young Timothy to consider what he is saying. For the Lord will give Timothy the insight, all these things. That means through the um, intimacy as the spiritual father and the son, they can speak the truth, have that in a, in a trusted relationship. So that legacy that, that Paul is passing on, to the young Timothy. Um, I'm sure there'll be no superficial harmony among them. Um, and we know yeah, superficial harmony or the artificial harmony is due to lack of trust in the team. And because people are fear of conflict, that's why they keep quiet. But that kind of harmony is not real harmony. There are false harmony and that will block all the healthy discussions that a team could have. So if team members do not trust one another, they will not engage in open and constructive discussion of their conflicting ideas. In the end, they will just continue to maintain a sense of artificial harmony. I think that happens a lot in uh, Asian culture because we don't like conflict. You know, we, we, we avoid conflict at all costs. But also, sometimes we don't have um, healthy discussions. And uh, in the team, it's just a sense of false harmony, not true harmony. There was a book, um, I think uh, written by Patrick uh, Lencioni. I think he, he make a very good um, statement. He said, when there is trust, conflicts become nothing but the pursuit of truth and attain to find the best possible answers. In his statement here, in other words, we're saying is if you want to pursue excellence, there must have honest, there must be trust within the team, they have that trust the relationship, they'll be able to speak from their hearts and be able to contribute to the team. 
And we know asking questions is the key to understanding and engaging in healthy debates. I say healthy debates, not destructive debates, but will help us to find solutions to the complexity of things. We are living in a very complex world. If our team want to excel, we must really have a trusted team that be able to speak to each other in truth with love. In the book of Acts, chapter 18, talking about Apollos, he's, he's a very uh, gifted um, preacher. And he was encouraged by those who are, uh, by, uh, by his co-workers, and he's be able to, uh, by grace, and he's be able to be powerful, refute the Jews in the public debate, proving the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. When we're talking about the um, apologetics, defending our faith, there's a lot of questions we need to ask. Questioning and apologetics basically is giving answers to people's questions. So how do we do this? How do we avoid superficial harmony. So we're going to look into how to think truthfully and encourage questions in our team and the true harmony that is built within the team. So first thing we must practice thinking in accordance with the whole counsel of God's, God's words. Deduce and understand the correct meaning of the text. Meditate on it day and night and mastering it. So this is the same thing as we come to, uh, when we build a team, right? We're thinking of a team harmony. I'm sure every um, student of the Bible, you and me, if we are serious about God's words, we will find places that we all don't understand. We might think, oh, why this is conflicting? Why there is a contradiction here? But if we are truly want to be a study God's words, to know the integrated words, that means to bring the harmony of, among conflicting ideas, we thought it's conflicting, but in God's whole counsel, it's not contradictory, but it's our mind unable to integrate and fit all what the Bible takes together, to integrate the Bible text together. But in order to achieve this, we need to have healthy debates over how biblical affirmations actually fits together. We'll never see the coherence of the scriptures and the beauty of the ununified divine truth of God if we don't debate on the biblical, different biblical affirmations. And this is the beauty of different denominations. At GJ, we might have come from people from all walks of, uh, you, you could have uh, come from a different theological background. But here, as long as you're born again, child of God, we are family in Christ. We might be strong in certain parts. We might be like the blind, try to find out how an elephant looked like. And that's why we need to humble before, uh, uh, before the team as we, if we, have the, we, if we adopt this humble attitude and the Berean attitude to let the word of God speak to us. And I'm sure we could have healthy debates on certain issues that we might, might not be agree with each other. And over the years, you know, uh, to the experience that I have with the, uh, with the seminaries, I find very hard to, um, the seminary present all sorts of uh, eschatological views. But I know every truthful student, if you study the word of God deep enough, you will have your stain. But we must not be dogmatic about our own stain, but we must be teachable, remain teachable, as long as it's reviewed in the word of God, we are humble 
to be teached by the others. So that's why um, we have our own theological state. Out of the convictions, hopefully is from the whole counsel of God, not fragmented truth. I love one of the uh, statements by John Piper. He said, insight or understanding is the product of intensive headache producing meditations on two or three verses and how they fit together. And this kind of reflections and ruminations is by provoked by asking questions of the text. That's why I always enjoy uh, GJ. We have more, I hope in future we have more QA session than teaching stations because teaching station is more of one way direct, one way ticket. You know, when, when I speak, you hear. Uh, I like to be more proactive. And the true learning is proactive, it's, it's two way communications. And also by integrating God's word is we search the word of God with our mind, with our intellect, but then we read as well with our heart, the scroll of the Lord, just like Isaiah chapter 34 verse 16, because the word of God, not one of God's words will go missing. That means that there's a whole council of God, it's complete. Not one will lack of their mates. That means they're always in agreement if they might appear to be conflict, but they actually, they're integrated. And the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, he said, because he has ordered by, by his mouth and he gathered them by his spirit. That's why I see the picture. If, if you see a light not concentrated to a point, you don't have breakthrough. A laser that can break through 10 inch of metal is because it was concentrated in a point. It's integrated. Integrated words is very, very powerful. And this is another way of saying um, tipping point. I use the word tipping point a lot because when we have fragmented ideas here and there a little bit, but when they gather to a point, when gathered by his spirit, it will come to a tipping point that become a concept, just like a train to become a fashion, a social behavior become a culture. They all need to reach a tipping point. In the same way, when Paul, when Paul called the elders of the fishers come to see him one day at, at Acts chapter 20, he was saying something very serious to them. He said, therefore, I test, testify to you this day that I'm innocent of the blood of all men, for I did not shrink back from declaring to you the whole counsel of God, keeping watch over yourself and the entire flock, which the Holy Spirit has made you the overseers, a shepherd of the church of God. That means Paul was warning them after he left, there will be wolves coming among them. Without a whole counsel of God, it's so easy. We are deceived by the devil. Because if we only know the truth, a little bit here, a little bit there, it's not good, not good enough. So Paul encouraged Timothy to avoid quarrels over words because that will only succeed in only leading listeners to the room. But he said, by make every effort to present yourself as a proof to God, as an ashamed, unashamed workman who accurately handles the word of the truth. It is my prayer. The Lord, I believe in the end time, God will raise up an army of people who can handle the word of God accurately, like a laser beam that will break through anything. And the whole counsel of God is very important. And this is the central theme, central thing that GJ is promoting. We don't want to be fragmented, but in order to have this, we need to have healthy discussions. We need to, just like what 
Peter was saying, because Peter was saying, sharing with the, the uh, in his epistle, he said in Second Peter, uh, in chapter one, he, he was saying his experience, he saw the glory, you know, the the um, Christ was um, transfigured before him, and he knew he is the living God, and that's why he said you must pay close attention to what the prophets wrote, for their words are like a lamb that's shining in a dark place until the day dawn that Christ, the morning sun, shines in your heart. That's why he said, above all else, you must realize no prophecy in a scripture ever come from the prophets on understanding. But prophets are moved or carried along by the Holy Spirit. They spoke the word of God. That means it's so important to let scripture to explain scriptures. Many times we twisted the meaning of the scriptures by reading our own ideas into the word. So we need to keep this book of the law on our lips, meditate on it day and night, and be careful to do everything that written in it, then we'll prosper and succeed. Thinking biblically or thinking truthfully also involve incarnations. How do we print God's word into our hearts? By practicing it. Like a wise builder building on a rock, do what the word of God says. And that means the word of God, just like what the apostle was saying, this is the word of life which they have gazed upon and touched upon with their own hands. They have their personal experience on it. We, with the Holy Spirit indwelling us, we can have the experiential knowledge of the resurrection power of Christ as well. So we need to have this fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The experiential knowledge, the yada knowledge of Christ then we'll be able to integrate the tensions between you know, the kingship, also the task-orientated, and the priesthood is the relationship. We find these other two, there's a tension. We find there's a tension in God's words, but they all can resolve in the template of Christ. Zechariah chapter 6, 13 said, It is he who shall build the temple of the Lord and shall bear the royal honor, and he shall sit and rule on the throne. And there he shall be the priest on the throne. That means the king is the priest. He will bring the council of peace between these two officers. As we read, we will integrate. That's why different perspectives and holistic thinking modes will bring about the breakthrough in the team. We, we believe every born again believers God's gift gift to them. And that's why we appreciate all the counsel of the saints in our team. Proverbs 24 verse 6 says, Surely you need guidance to which war. Victory is won through many counselors. We need counselors. We, so the concept of idea building, you know, we need to honor. God never give one person all the gift. We need, that is why we learn how to appreciate each other in the body of Christ. So in a team, we need to have the brainstorming. The concept of idea building is sharing ideas, which trigger new ideas, which create in a chain of new thoughts. The only way idea can thrive in a brainstorming session is no idea is immediately put down. Then you will encourage your team member to share what is in your heart. So if it is possible, we should set schedule of brainstorming sessions and rotate different people to lead that brainstorming sessions. And this way people will have a chance to think creatively about the solution, possible solution. We can look at it from different angles. Because without wise leadership, a nation's fall, a team will fall. There is safety in having many counselors 
in the team. Proverbs 20 verse 18 says, plan succeed through good counsel. Don't go to war without wise advice. So it's critical for a team to build a good relationship with a team. When you have a relationship, you have the authority. When you have the authority, you can speak the truth in love. Many times in a team, discussion fail because when there is no authority, when there is no relationship among the team. That's why before we do something, we build relationship. Just like what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, verse 4, 15. He said, we will grow to become in every respect of the mature body. So that when we speak the truth in love, this growth will happen. So Christ is the head. That from him, the whole body will join and held together by every supporting ligaments, grows and builds itself out in love as every individual part does its words. And to pursue excellence, speaking the truth with love is so important. And we know learning in the team is as quiet by asking. Like asking, and I, I use an example here, 5W1H is uh, what we call a deductive Bible study method. You know, the 5W is the, um, why give you the height, what give you the depth, right? And they remember the horizontal, all right? Uh, time, talking about time is kingship, and then the um, and then the place, and then people. There is the three W, who, you know, who, when, where, why, what. This is called a five W. That means you explore the height and depth of that biblical text you ask by keep on asking the questions. That means you explore from every level, the width, the length, uh, the height, the depth. And then H is how, how do I use it? You use it, become your experiential knowledge that will come to a tipping point. This is like a deductive Bible study. So we should, every time we read the word of God, we say, we open our my eyes to see the wonderful things on your law. Every time you read the scriptures, you discover new things because they're so rich. All wisdom of God is hidden in his word. So we need some kind of stimulation to get our mind thinking and break the habit of just reading the scriptures. That's why many people, religious people, they read the Bible passively. After they read, you ask them what you have read, they say, I don't know, I forgot. That means they read the scriptures without asking all sorts. So if we begin by asking questions, we are reaching the point. You know, when we enter the school of Christ, Ephesians chapter 4, when we come to know Christ, we heard of him prophetically. Faith comes from hearing. And we are taught in him in his way. How do we live a life of God in a way to do it? And then we are keeping the truth so that we can grow into his likeness. We come to a tipping point where we're coming to the school of Christ. And it's important if we do it this way. And, and when we build an atmosphere of trust in the best environment for questioning, that's why small group Bible study works because if the other members trust each other, we have a good relationship, we can ask all sorts of silly questions. No one's gonna laugh at you. Every good question, question is a good question because we need to view environment of trust so that the best environment for questioning and pursuing excellence. Proverbs chapter 20 verse five says, the purpose of the man's heart are like deep water. And sometimes you cannot just look at the surface. But deep water means even there is a huge undercurrent in the depth of water, you don't see it, the surface might appear very calm. That means everyone, the purpose or the intentions of every man's heart are like deep waters. But you and I must be the people who have insight, who can draw them out. That's why you will find out your team. 
He said, many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find it? Who is truly devoted? Proverbs 18 verse 4, he said, the word of the mouth are like deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is like a rushing brook. We need iron shopping irons so that as we pursue excellence, you know, we can draw out people's intentions. Is the, the, the spirit of man is like the lamb of the Lord that search its innermost being. Proverbs 20, 27. Unless our hearts are reviewed, our heart does not transform. So an excellent team is always humble to learn through brainstorming. I love brainstormings and that's how we progressed. And God always gives grace to the humble, but he opposed the proud. People think that he knows it all. They do not need brainstorming. People who think he don't know, they always operate on solo. But GJ, we always promoting on team, team, team. I know it says John 3.30, he must increase, I must decrease. A too big an eye is a problem for a team. For a team. Pride, P-R-I-D-E, I I is in the middle, sin, it's I in, I is in the middle, I is the problem. Proverbs, in Psalms chapter 138 verse 6, it says, Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the pride. Prides will always end in humiliations, while Humility always brings honor. So our united teams lives in harmony, is motivated by the love of Christ. So we need to build true harmony in the team, not superficial one. Because Christ's love will compel the team so that when we truly love our brothers and sisters, it costs us the same thing as how Christ did to us. One died for all. Therefore, we all die. And he died for all that those who live no longer should live for themselves, but for him who will die for us, who has rest again. So we need to know God's love has been revealed among us because God sent his son on his son to the world. You know, God didn't just talk about his love. He, his action through his love, he sent his son into the world so that we might live through him. So love, consists of this not that we love god but he loves us he sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins so every time we have to remember what god did for us there's no reason we can no reason we are never to love one another and many times in the team why there is fear of conflict because there's no love within the team because when there's no love, there's always fear. John chapter 4, verse 16, 18, John said, we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. Who abides in love, abides in love. And God's in him. So God has been perfect among us so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment. For in this world, we are just like him. But there is no fear in love. But perfect love will drive out all fear because fear involves judgment. And the one who fears has not been perfected in love. Remember the 4E in verse 18? You know, the first E talking about embrace. There is no love in, uh, there is no fear in love. When we embrace love, there is no fear. That's why embrace. We must embrace love. And the second E, expel. He said, perfect love will drive out all fear. Love have no place for fear in the team. Expel all fear. And then fear has to do with punishment. Thereby we must educate the next E, educate. We care educating our mind uh, because Fear is to do with punishment. And the one who fears has not been perfected in love because excel. That's why we need to excel in God's love. 
So we remember embrace, expel, educate, and then excel. We ask God to not give us a, a spirit of fear, but a spirit of courage, love, and a sound discipline mind. So a true harmonious team is a team that embrace, thinks, and pursue true love and has sense of security. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love brought to the full expression in us. We know God called us to be perfect because he's perfect in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. But this is a journey that tells you is we are slowly conforming to his likeness so that we, you know, when we grow to be like him, we have this sonship of Christ. We do not receive the spirit of slavery that returns to fear, but we receive the spirit of sonship. So we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself testified that our spirit, that we are God's children. So if we come to him as a father, his love pour into our hearts. We are heirs. We are co-heirs with Christ. We, we suffer with him, but we were glorified with him. So most leadership fell because there's a lack of security in Christ. Let us know. Let the Lord know uh, let, let the Lord teach us our true identity in Christ. In Christ, there is no fear. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for teaching us about the um, one of the malfunctions or dysfunction of the team is the fear of conflict. Because of the fear of conflict, the team become a false sense of harmony, an artificial harmony. There's no true relationship and our team were unable to excel to brainstorm and to excel what you called us. So help us as GJ, we build a team that we can look into each other's eyes, we love one another deeply, just like how Christ you have loved us. Father, we thank you, bless our team, to continue to pursue excellence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for the sharing on artificial harmony. Yeah. Now let's quiet our heart.